I wanted to make kind of a revenge video for a while now since that first road tubeless video I made. Uh, I have a lot more experience now, but I keep getting these comments on that video like road tubeless is stupid or this is why I don't touch road tubeless or something like that. And they're kind of missing the point of that video because I sucked at setting up tubeless and I wanted to show what happens when you do some stupid mistakes. Anyway, I'm older and wiser now, hopefully. Before we get into this, I'm not trying to convert anyone to tubeless. If you're happy with your clean shirts or God forbid your tubelers, stick with that. What works, works. Second point, contrary to the popular belief, it seems I'm not running tubeless because of weight savings. I still think you can go lighter with some really light clincher tires and inner tubes. For me, it's all about puncture resistance. I went from a couple of punctures every season, mostly snake bites and a couple of sidewall cuts to almost zero flats the last few years. I think I had one real puncture when I pushed some extra light compass tires a bit too hard off road and one instance where I kind of neglected the sealant and let it totally dry out. There might have been some punctures that seal by itself but that's kind of the good merit about tubeless. Of course this is totally my personal anecdotal experience with tubeless and again if you're happy with your inner tubes no need to change just because some dork on the internet said he liked something else. All right, with that out of the way, I wanna share some tips that have made my tubeless life very convenient and also share a few things to watch out for that could make your tubeless life very inconvenient. Nothing really earth shattering or uh, groundbreaking, but I think it will be a bit more in depth than just saying get an air compressor and use soapy water. And we can start there actually, the compressor. I don't use a compressor because my living situation doesn't really allow for it. If I have one, I would of course use it to my heart content. But since I started really paying attention to the most important part of the tubeless setup, that is the tubeless tape, I have not really missed a compressor. And by tape being the most important part, I'm not saying that you need the most expensive tape or something like that. I actually use, where do I have it? I actually use this. This is a really cheap Scotch or 3M 8898 tape that I bought in bulk and this will probably last me another two, three years. But a properly uh, taped up wheel will not only help you with the installation, it would also make your life a bit easier if you ever get that puncture out on the road that doesn't want to seal. So first I make sure that my tubeless tape is a few millimeters wider than the actual inner width of the rim. I want the tape to reach from rim wall to rim wall even if the tape is pushed down in the center channel. So let's say if I have a 21 millimeter inner width rim I will probably have a tape that is about 24 millimeters or something like that and if you have tape that it's too wide it's pretty easy just using a knife laying it down on a flat surface and spin the tape around against the knife to trim off to whatever size you need. Laying down the tape on the rim itself is not really that uh, hard just make sure the rim is nice and clean hold the end of the tape, pull with a nice tension on the tape, lay down and repeat. If you have a proper tubeless tape that is a li little bit thicker, usually one layer with some overlap around the valve hole, like two or three spoke holes, should be enough. In the case of my cheap uh, 3M tape, I always use two layers to be on the safe side. After the tape is down, I just use something blunt plastic. In my case, I use a tire lever and just make sure that the tape has really stuck to the bottom of the rim. I poke a small hole in the rim tape for the valve and then use the valve itself to actually push it through, making it nice and airtight. When it comes to the valve nut, I need to be able to remove the valve if I end up with a puncture that requires an inner tube. So cranking the valve nut with pliers or something like that will probably make it rather frustrating if that day ever comes. 
Besides, I don't need to crank it down that hard. That little O-ring underneath the nut will keep it from unraveling. So my simple rule is as tight as I can get it with my fingers. And every time I pump up the tires, I will just give it a little bit of a twist to make sure I can actually get this well nut off out on the road. When it comes to the valve itself, these square types is definitely easier to deal with as they don't rotate as easy. But I haven't had any major problems with this round one either. I obviously haven't tried every single tie brand out there, but I haven't had any problems uh, installing tires from Schwalbe, Pirelli, Panaracer, IRC, etc, etc. And I'm sure there are some nightmare combinations out there that I haven't touched, but modern tires and rims seem to have been gotten a lot better in this area, at least in my experience. Even if it might seem impossible at first, I always manage to get these tires on without the use of any tire levers. The little hack I've been using the last few years is just applying a thin layer of bead wax on the tire bead before I put the tire on. That will not only help with the actual installation, but it will also help with seating the tire once I start pumping. And no need to use any kind of soapy water or stuff like that either. If I'm struggling with getting a good grip, I use rubber gloves. Not in this case, but just pushing that tire down in the center channel of the rim and working my way all around usually gets the job done, no issues. So when it comes to road tubeless tires, I always want to seat the tire completely before adding any sealant. And that is part to keep the mess to a minimum, but it's also because I want to make sure that the tire stays seated even if the tire is fully deflated. I'll get back to this point in a bit, but first I will get this tire seated and ready. So I remove the valve core from the stem, attach my normal floor pump and just go to town. Even if it seems impossible at first, I will just keep pumping and eventually the tire will go on. The few times I've been struggling with just my regular front pump or even the tubeless pump, I've solved this by adding another layer of tape. I was actually trying to prove this point here by just using one layer of tape, but the tire still went on. So that speaks to how much the tubeless tires have improved the last few years. So you have to take my word for it. If you can't get the tire to seat, add another layer of tape and see how that works out for you. So now I got the tires on, uh, the bead is seated all the way around on both sides of the rim. As I remove the pump, the tire will completely deflate and here is the main point of this video. The tire needs to stay seated even when deflated. Not only because it's easier to just add sealant and pump it up again and be on your way, but the main reason for me is if you ever get that puncture out on the road, I really want the tire to not pop off the bead. And I will kind of illustrate this by puncturing my old tire here. A little side note, puncturing the center thread is actually really hard. It even sealed at first having the puncture at 12 o'clock, which was kind of surprising. I finally got the tire to totally deflate and notice my tire is still seated. So this might help protect the rim a bit if I was trying to bring the bike to a stop. But the important point is when I plug this kind of puncture, I will be able to pump the tire back up with my tiny hand pump. Had the tire unseated though, there's no way in hell I would be able to pump this tire up with my mini pump. I will argue that even a CO2 would also be quite risky if that fails. I would be pretty much stuck without a mini pump. In that case, the only way out for me would be to put in an inner tube, which is why I always carry a spare, even if I'm on tubeless, just to be on the safe side. So back to the installation here. Uh, if the tire unseats when I remove the pump, like it has done for me in the past, the way I managed to fix this is again by adding another layer of tape. So with that hurdle cleared, uh, I just add uh, the sealant, put in that valve core again and pump up the tire, probably with minimal mess. Give everything a good shake and a spin to get that sealant all over the inside of the tire. If the tire loses air overnight, I usually put the tire on something so I can keep it totally horizontally 
leave it there for a few hours, flip it around uh, for another few hours. And after that, it always holds air without fail in my experience. So again, it's all about that tape job. And even when you change your uh, tubeless tires, always check the tape really thoroughly. Of course, if it looks like this, just change the tape immediately. I basically change the tape every time I change tires because the 3M tape is maybe not the best one at keeping its shape when you remove the tire. But no matter what tape you use, definitely inspect the tape around the spoke holes because in the past there is where I have some incidents like in the first tubeless video I made. So basically don't take any chances if you have to remove the tape and apply new, do it. Just make sure the rim is nice, clean and dry before you apply the new layer of tape and you should be golden. Another thing to keep an eye out is the tubeless valve or specifically the valve core. This can get pretty gunked up with the dry sealant. So check that from time to time. Usually it's really simple to peel off that dry sealant, but one of these tam packs of inner cores are really cheap. So if the cores feels sticky or something like that, I will just put a new core in when I swap tires. So I think that's all I have for now. Give it another two or three, four years and I probably have some new lessons to annoy you with. We'll see. Now, I said at the beginning, I don't ride tubeless because of any kind of weight saving. That being said, I definitely don't go out of my way to pick a heavy tire. Always try to go with the lighter tubeless options out there. And that is why you will never see me riding on a GP5000 TL, for example. I mean, 50 grams penalty for absolutely no reason. Now, if that rumor of a new GP5000 TR is true, we might actually have the lightest tubeless tire ever. The future is bright, so let's keep up the fight. I'm done. And yes, make sure the tape is really st stuck, stick, stuck, stick to it.